Hello and welcome to our watercolor journey. Keeping it simple can sometimes be a bit difficult. Let's see how Heinrich does it. All the materials used are listed in the description below. So gear up and come paint with us. The Saunders Waterford block is flat on the table and the picture plane is taped with masking tape to create a white border. Make sure the tape is secure to prevent seepage. Heinrich uses the Wahong number no. 1 Hake brush to wet the paper about two thirds down to create a horizon line. Heinrich keeps it simple by using a minimal palette consisting of Quinacridone Gold Deep by Core Golden and a premix of French Ultramarine by Daniel Smith and Burnt Umber by Windsor & Newton. This premix gives a lovely blue-gray color and you can make it darker or lighter by adjusting the amount of ultramarine or burnt umber you add. He uses the same hockey brush to paint a very dilute mix of gray into the sky. He keeps the brush strokes light and leaves plenty of white space in the sky. This is going to produce a very light, overcast looking sky. Because the paper is flat on the table, the paint doesn't run. It just softly blends with the water. He uses the same mix to make a few marks where he wants the trees in the background, all very gentle and minimalistic. Work as softly as possible. The brush should barely kiss the paper. Now see what happens when he adds the quinacridone gold deep. Core paint spread like wildfire. It almost pushes the other pigments away. Notice also how it contains the paint's gray blue that Heinrich has added. He just dabbed it in very lightly. He rinses the brush and now he uses the gray premix to paint the foreground. He uses the tip of the brush to make a few light watery marks, leaving much of the foreground unpainted for now. Now here, he touched the brush to the waterline on the horizon, which causes the paint there to start flowing into the middle ground. This is a run back, which can create beautiful textures, but can also ruin your painting. We'll see a bit later what happens here once the painting is dry. He adds some paint gray blue to make a few darker marks in the foreground, still trying to preserve some of the white of the paper. He adds a few streaks of the Gwyn Gold and so ties the sky and the foreground nicely together. He lifts some of the water off the horizon and blends paints with a few gentle strokes. Then he tilts the paper in different directions to help the paint flow. Where the paper has become a bit dry, he sprays it with clean water from a spray bottle and then tilts it again. Here is the mishap. He wants to get rid of the run back that was caused by the tilting and he uses the wet brush to straighten the horizon line. However, the brush is wetter than the surface of the paper, so he basically just added water to the area and this made the run back even worse. He decided to let the painting dry. The painting has now dried and you can see the blooms, runbacks and hard lines caused by the extra water. Now, How do you fix this? Stand back and have a look at your background. What do you see? What can you do to incorporate the hard lines that were formed? Well, the easiest way is to simply paint your next layer over them. 
Hanuk used the silver ruby satin triangle brush to paint a few trees in the background. This brush has a large belly and a very fine tip, so it holds a lot of paint and you can make super fine lines with it. He uses a very dilute mix of French ultramarine and burnt umber to paint a few more trees above the area where the paint flowed into the middle ground. By doing this, he created natural shadows for the trees. He then makes a few horizontal marks under the trees to ground them, so they don't look like they are floating in the mist. He varies between the quin gold and the grey mix to add some warmth and shadows to the trees. Now he uses the hard line in the foreground to help create texture in the terrain by painting a jagged rocky, rocky ledge over it. To keep the painting balanced, he repeats the same marks to create more rocks in the rest of the foreground. All this time he uses very dilute paint and minimal brush strokes, touching the paper very lightly with a brush.
he uses the belly of the ruby satin to paint some grasses in the foreground. So how do you know when you are done? Some artists say you should stop before you think it's finished. If you think that you can still do something here or there, then it's a very good time to stop. Heinrich signs his paintings when he feels that they're done. That kind of says the end, like in a movie, and then he removes the tape. Once the tape is off, you run the risk of painting over the border, so it helps to keep you from fiddling with it. I really hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. Vaya con Dios.